So bloom is an awesome effect that you can use, but there are some issues when exporting. Let's just take our cube in front of us here, for example. If I go ahead to its material and make it have an emission, this is one of the straightforward ways of actually getting some bloom effect or something along those lines. I'm going to set it to a, a deep orange or something like that, and I'm going to up the strength a little. Now, in order to see the bloom effect, we do need to be in rendered mode, so I'm going to switch over to that. We still can't see it. We need to add a glare node in, and if you want to learn more about that, I've got a video added to a card here. I've actually made an add-on, link in the description if you want that, where we can just add the glare node and switch over to render view straight away, and we can have a look at what it's supposed to look like. Now, if we change some of these values so it's not quite so big, and then go to the camera view, yeah, that looks pretty good. We do want it with transparency. Often when we're exporting something with Bloom, we actually want to use that effect as well around our object. I'm going to go down to where we can see the film option and turn on transparent. Okay, I think we're ready for exporting. So let's go ahead and render. And we need to export it. So we're going to go image and save as. And we're going to pick something that has an alpha channel because we need the alpha channel there for the transparency otherwise we won't be able to see through now I'm gonna pick a PNG and RGBA it doesn't really matter which one you pick and I'm gonna export it into my bloom example folder here and I'm just gonna call it bloom test now I know that this is indeed not going to work and we'll go into the depths of why it's not gonna work in a bit but let's say you were using something like affinity photo or resolve or any other program where you start layering objects on top of one another if I go ahead and grab that image that we just made and plop it on whilst it does have the transparency as you can see here it's got no bloom at all which is no good and in fact later on when we start using this drop down here this might be a bit small for you we will be using add in order to add it on but unfortunately when we export from blender we actually need to export two files now I have had Blender crash on me a couple of times when doing this, so hopefully it won't. But we do need to go over into the compositing workspace. And once you've got this all set up, you can even render animations out like this. So what we need is two things. We need an image that comes through that's a block out, a silhouette of our object, and then we need a combined image with a darker background and then we can add that on and because the darker background is there it's a value of zero if we use black then it's not added but the bloom effect is it's a very bizarre work around that we have to do here um, it's just the way that blender happens to work with it so out of this glare node we're going to need to have a mix node so a mix rgb and i'm just going to take this image output here and plug it into a viewer node as well so we can see what's going on oh so what's happening here apart from from me just flash banging everybody the mix node here is set to white we don't want it at white we want it at black now we've actually got a silhouette here which is kind of what we want um, later on but not at the moment we actually need this plugged in to the lower value and there we go this is what we want to export Excellent. Now, the next one we need to take from the image itself. So from this render layers, we need to go into another mix node. And this time, we're just going to multiply. It doesn't matter which one these are in because we're going to set this to black. If we multiply something by zero, it's going to go to zero. Let's plug this into the viewer node to see what it's going to look like. And there we go. We've got that silhouette that I was talking about. Now, this is the only real setup that we need. We just need to export these now. Now, I could render them out individually like this. Alternatively, we can set it up so Blender can do that automatically. So we need one final node. Let's go ahead and add in an output file output. Let's take this top one here. This top one here is the cutout, so I'm going to name it such. Let's click on the file output node. And over here on the right hand side, we're going to go to the node tab and change where it says image here. We're going to double click and I'm going to go cut out. Then we've got one more, so we need to add an input. Funny, because it's an output, but it's an input to the output. And then we're going to plug this mix node into the bottom one. And again, I don't want to call it image. This one's going to be called Bloom. You can name them how you like. Finally, this export path. I'm going to set it to the path that we were playing in earlier, so my Bloom example folder. I'm going to click accept. Now you do need to make sure you've got a file format that has an alpha channel. So in this case, a PNG RGBA is absolutely fine. And then we just go ahead and render. So we go and render that image. What actually is now happening is it's rendering those two images and saving them automatically for us. Let's go over to our image program and then we'll show this in Blender as well in a moment. So now that we have that, I can drag in. Well, actually, let's delete my bloom test. 
and let's drag in the other two. So let's drag in our bloom and our cutout. Now these have to be in a specific order. I'm going to align them first to the canvas and then I actually need to change, <laughs> that looks kind of cool, it's like a, a black hole effect, but I need to change the order in which this happens. So we have a background, we have to have that background, otherwise it's not going to work, and that background can be anything you like. Ultimately, this is the image that you're going to put things over. In fact, we can swap it out for an image. I've got an image in here just waiting. So a lovely bloom can be around some monkeys. Right, let's just size that up. Okay, so what do we need to do here? Well, we've got the cutout set at normal, and then this bloom needs to be set to add. And there we go, the bloom effect is back again. Now, you can do this all over in Blender as well. In fact, the video editing workspace is perfect for this, and this would be a great example if you were doing it over in Resolve as well, but I like staying in Blender for some of these things. So let's go to the video editing workspace, and we've got a little file browser here. Let's go to the, my Bloom example. And let's drag in our monkeys again. There we go. There are our monkeys. Let's drag in our cutout. There's our cutout. And then finally our Bloom. Now, ultimately, it will just go black. But if we go ahead and set over on the side here the strip, our blend mode over to add, just like we did before, we can see our Bloom effect. And there we go. That's everything that we need in order to use Bloom externally from Blender. Now, if we actually remove or hide channel one here, you can see we go back to our previous problem. We need to have that background there. And that's okay. And you can use this technique over in OBS for live streaming. You can use it in a video editor. You can use it elsewhere now. And this is the correct way of getting Bloom out of Blender and working properly. There are loads of other workarounds, but I believe this gives the best and accurate representation compared to what you're seeing in Blender. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one.